From New Orleans, the first course is cooked by Frank Brightson. It features salty Louisiana oysters and a homemade version of Italian sausage brought together in a gratin. The entree is prepared by Don Yamauchi, who at taping time was chef de cuisine at Carlos in Highland Park, a Chicago suburb. He offers a rabbit and foie gras Napoleon. Dessert comes from Jamie Adams in Atlanta. It's the Italian classic panna cotta, which he teams with the family classic, his mother's pecan cookies. Frank Brightson's namesake restaurant's fame was earned, as they say, the old-fashioned way. He cooks the line in a small kitchen every night, personally deals with vendors, and even handwrites the daily menu. With prodigious cooking talent, he elevates Creole Acadian cuisine, like this oyster gratin. And we're gonna start by making our topping. We can take some uh, grated Italian Parmesan cheese, some finely grated French breadcrumbs, and melted butter. This is unsalted butter. And this is uh, hot Hungarian paprika, which will give it a little bit of spice and a nice color. We're going to mix that up. And this will go on top of our oysters at the end. Okay. Now we're going to make our Italian sausage here. You could use uh, store-bought sausage or from your local butcher, but it's relatively easy to make. We're going to start with some olive oil. You can use extra virgin, but in cooking you really don't really need that. You can use just regular pure olive oil. And we're going to use fresh ground pork today. Uh, which is my preference. You can also use uh, ground beef or you could use a combination if you like. And we're going to start this in low heat so that the pork browns nice and slowly. And when you go to your butcher, you usually have a choice of hot or sweet Italian sausage. Uh, the hot being made with red pepper and the sweet being made with fennel or anise. We're going to do a combination today. We're going to do uh, hot and sweet, using crushed red pepper flakes and also some whole anise seeds, uh, which is my preference. This is one of those unusual dishes where you're using a combination of meat and seafood uh, but I find that the seasonings that are in the Italian sausage really complement the salty, flinty taste of the oysters. It's a nice combination. This is ground pork loin, uh, which is pretty lean. You can also use uh, pork butt or something with a little more fat to it. Once your pork starts to brown a little bit, we're going to raise the heat and we're going to add some diced yellow onion. small batch of sausage so it's going to be a relatively short cooking time so you want to get your seasonings in fairly early in the cooking process so we're going to add some minced fresh garlic salt the crushed red pepper flakes Keep that stirring. And now the main season, in which is the whole anise seeds. We're going to add some oregano. 
I'm using dried here. You can use fresh. You can already smell the, the anise seeds starting to release their flavors. Being a dry spice, it's good to get that strong bottom heat on the bottom to wake up the flavors a little bit. Now you can see the meat is completely browned and the onions are starting to get a little soft and starting to turn clear. So what we're going to do is reduce our heat to low and let the sausage mixture simmer for a few minutes. Now fresh oysters are shucked. We're going to put the shucked oysters into a strainer so that we reserve some of the oyster liquor or liquid that comes with the shucked oysters. And that'll be used to flavor the dish. The next step calls for softening chopped shallots in butter. We'll add a little bit of our sausage mixture. Fresh spinach leaves. Just want to wilt the leaves a little bit. And then we're going to remove the skillet from the heat and add our B&B &B liqueur. Flame it. We'll add our shucked oysters. And you'll notice I made up these oysters last because we don't want to overcook the oysters. We'll just lightly saute them. Add a little bit of our oyster liquor to make a sauce, and bring that to a boil, and just a teaspoon of butter to make a sauce, and finally some shredded Romano cheese, which gives it a nice texture and flavor. Now they're ready to go into our shells. And then an oyster. And then we'll top the oysters with our cheese and breadcrumb mixture. We'll give it a nice little crunch once we go under the broiler. Okay, the oysters come out of the broiler, nice and brown on top. Put them onto our presentation plate. Don Yamauchi is a Chicago native who became interested in cooking early on. Indeed, from fifth grade, he took home economics, which could be a parlous endeavor for a young man. Fortunately, he would also become a black belt in karate, keeping teasing under control. Here is a rabbit foie gras Napoleon. Chopped shallots and garlic are softened in olive oil to begin the dish. I'm going to add shiitake mushrooms and chanterelles. I'm going to season with salt and pepper. I'm 
going to add a little demi-glaze. This is duck demi-gloss, but any kind will do. I'm going to set this aside. Same time, we're going to cook the rabbit. The rabbit loin is seasoned with salt and pepper and goes into hot olive oil. Because of the high fat content of the foie gras, no oil is used for sautéing. The foie gras cooks very quickly and is drained on a towel. Garnish diced tomato and cooked fresh peas are warmed in a little of the demi-gloss. The wild mushrooms begin presentation. A napoleon is layered using thin sliced deep fried potatoes. Veni Vidi Vici is an upscale Italian restaurant in Atlanta. It's owned by the Buckhead Life Restaurant Group, and the executive chef there is Jamie Adams. A native of Atlanta, he was an English major in college, then spent considerable time in Italy cooking. He reveals the experience with panna cotta. This is a very, very simple, but very, very delicious traditional Piemontese dish called panna cotta, which just means cooked cream. And it's simply that. It's cooked cream with a little, little bit of um, gelatin leaves, vanilla bean, rum, sugar. Very simple, but as you see, as you'll see in a few minutes, it can be a very elegant dessert. Very simply done. We start out with heavy cream.
milk. And sugar. We'll bring this to a boil. To melt the sugar. Let it simmer for just a moment. In the meantime, we'll slice our vanilla bean. and allow that to steep in with the cream as well. And I have softened here, uh, as I mentioned, four leaves of gelatin, and you need to only do this 20 minutes or so before preparing the dish. Uh, gelatin leaves come up with a much more s subtle and supple um, texture in the, in the final product. The other gelatins can tend to get very gummy and rubbery. That's why I prefer the, the gelatin leaves. Stir it around a little bit to help shake the, the vanilla bean around and let it steep the cream. We're about to come up to a boil here. And as such, we'll add the gelatin leaves. Let their water drain out of them. Let too much more liquid get in there. It'll change the balance of the gelatin to liquid. Once we put the gelatin leaf in, we'll remove it from the heat and allow that to just steep for a moment. Granulated sugar is poured into a saute pan and will be caramelized. Right into the pan. The caramel will be poured into the bottom of oven-proof ramekins. Now I've taken with this dish a, a traditional Italian um, dessert, which I'm going to combine with my mother's old cotton cookie recipe from New Orleans, where she's from. So combine the two classics and come up with something, something new. The sugar has caramelized and the chef stirs continuously. I want it to be a nice deep golden brown. You don't want to get it too black. It gets very bitter and unpleasant. I'm going to be sure that all the little granules are, are dissolved. Okay, now we're ready to go into the ramekin. Very careful with this so it behaves in a dangerous manner. You can't let it get on yourself at all. It'll burn you very badly. Okay, just cover the bottom of the ramekins like so. And I have done a little bit of it, a little bit more sugar than I needed. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to combine, this is my pecan brittle that we're going to use. I've just simply poured pecans into the, into the pan and poured them out and let them cool. Now at this point, we can't forget to add our white rum to the mixture. cream directly into the ramekin, right over the sugar, fill it up to the very top. And we're going to allow that to cool. The baked pecan cookie is cut for presentation. Press down with the other, very gently. We'll just allow that to cool. And I'm going to swirl this over the flame for just a second. Turn the 
this over on the plate. Voila. Helicopter. You want to let some of the caramelized sugar drip out. So and here I have prepared one of our one of our cookie rings. I'm gonna take just little pieces of our crocanti and place them on top around. Just little pieces that go very well with the, the flavors in there. This is a dessert also that needs no sauce. Mint leaf. There we go.